Good morning. It's good to see you. I hope you had a good weekend. Today's Monday, and on Mondays, it's we talk about a character from the Old Testament. Today, we're going to talk about a person named Melchizedek. He shows up in the account in the life of Abraham, and he only shows up for a little bit, just a few verses. But come on to the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 14, and that's where we are introduced to him. And he actually does point to Jesus, and we'll talk about uh, a little bit about where that reference is um, here in a few minutes. But come on to Genesis. Genesis chapter 14. Thanks for joining us today. Genesis 14, let's start reading in verse 17. The situation is, is that Abraham's nephew Lot was taken captive. And Abraham has to go rescue him, and he does. And as verse 16 says, he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods, as well as the women and the people. Then you have verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheba, or however you pronounce that. That is the king's valley after his return from the defeat of Shedderlaomer and the kings who were with him. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, and he gave him a tithe of all. And then the king of Sodom is going to come in and try to effectively make Abram an offer, and Abram is basically going to say, nothing doing. Um but Abram, as it is, um, it was Abram and Melchizedek. As Abram says, I have raised my hand to the Lord God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth. Abram had a choice, and his choice was either the king of Sodom or the king of Salem. Now, to think about the account and to think about Melchizedek, I want you to consider, just from these few verses, a few points. One is, he's greater than Abram. He's greater than Abraham. It makes the point in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews. It talks about how the lesser, the lesser is blessed by the greater. And Melchizedek comes out and blesses Abram. Now, you might remember what the Lord had said. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Melchizedek comes out and he blesses Abram. The lesser is blessed by the greater. And that's in Hebrews chapter 11, or pardon me, Hebrews chapter 7. Um, Melchizedek is greater than Abraham. And you think about the significance of that. Because to the Jews, in their estimation, Abraham was about as high as you can get. But yet here's this individual all of a sudden who just shows up on the scene. And he's greater than Abraham as Abraham gives him a tithe. You might think about it. He's greater than Abraham. He is both king and priest. Throughout the Old Testament, you either had kings or you had priests, right? You either had Moses or you had Aaron. You either had Joshua or you had the high priest, right? You, you always had the king and you had the high priest. In, Melchiz in Melchizedek, he is both king and priest, in one person. You might think about just how significant that is. His name, Melchizedek, literally means the king of righteousness. But he's also the king of Salem itself, so he's so he is called both the king of righteousness, his name, so he's the king of righteousness and the king of peace. That's who Melchizedek is, as he is as he serves as priest of God Most High. He's also not of the tribe of Levi or the family of Aaron. Okay, obviously he predates all that. You might consider if Abraham is the father of the Jews, then obviously Melchizedek did not come from Abraham. So you might start thinking about that. He's not, he's not a Jew. So you might consider that. He's not of the tribe of Levi. He's not of the family of Aaron. But yet he is priest. He comes out and when he meets Abraham, when he meets Abram, he has bread and wine. Some have speculated that perhaps that is an allusion 
um, to the Lord's Supper, perhaps bread and wine. Scripture never makes that point, so I guess we probably should not either. But the point that Scripture does make is is that Melchizedek does point to Jesus. So as you think about our points, come up to Hebrews chapter 7. In Hebrews chapter 7, and it's it's interesting because and we just don't have time to read everything about Melchizedek in Hebrews, because in Genesis we only see Melchizedek for a handful of verses, but yet all of a sudden in Hebrews you have you have you have quite a bit written about him because it's pointing us toward Jesus. Verse one, Hebrews seven. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but like, but like, made like, the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Doesn't mean that Melchizedek's immortal. That's not what it means. But we don't know, like all the rest of, um, like Israel, frankly, how genealogy was everything to them. Well, we don't know anything about the genealogy of Melchizedek. As far as we can tell from reading it, we don't read about his beginning. We don't read about his end. And in that, he is made like the Son of God as you have Jesus who was in the beginning, in the beginning was God and was with God, and of course goes on into eternity. But anyway, you can read on about Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 7, but then of course it does point us to Jesus. Verse 17, for he testifies, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So here's this individual who we just have three or four verses about, just a handful of verses in the book of Genesis, and we have a foreshadowing of the Christ himself. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Hope you enjoyed this. Just brief thoughts today, just a little bit of our daily bread. Probably a lot of folks don't know much about Melchizedek. You may never have heard of Melchizedek, but as Abraham encounters him, he encounters the one who would point towards the Messiah himself. Hope hope this study was helpful to you in some way. Hope you have a good day. Hope you're able to tune in tomorrow for another look into God's Word. Thanks for being with us today.